The inverse square law. This is Michelle's analogy of the inverse square law and sort of a funny analogy. But I'm going to give you a story of a portable sun tanning lamp that my mom bought me at JCPenney's when I was a teenager. The black sun tanning lamp up in the upper left corner is the actual lamp that we had. Um, and I had a lot of funny stories uh, from the use of that uh, darn lamp. But um, I put this lamp at the recommended distance away from me and used it a couple of times and didn't notice much difference. Um, of course, being a teenager, you know, you want instant gratification for everything that you do. So I didn't notice much of a difference using this sun tanning lamp. So I moved the lamp closer after a couple times and wanted that instant radiation, you know, the instant suntan and glow. So after the first time I moved it closer, I burnt to a crisp. So the closer to the source, the hotter I got. The intensity was greater. So obviously being closer to a source, the intensity of radiation is greater. The farther away, the less intense and the less noticeable. So if you think about radiation safety and protection rules, the inverse square law is a component of ALARA as well. So on exams, if we have a problem where we are increasing the distance, we know the dose is going to be lower for our answer. This is because as you get farther from the source, the intensity is lower. So if you mess up on your equation, don't pick the higher number without thinking about it. Ask yourself first, should my answer be higher or lower? And then cross out what's not going to make sense. So this is um, a way to tell yourself at the beginning, well, the distance is getting farther away, so I know my answer is going to be lower. So right off the bat, cross the higher answers out. That way, if I accidentally flip my equation around and I get a higher answer, I'm not going to pick the wrong answer on here. It's a way of eliminating that that error ahead of time because the MDCV will give you both ways of solving that problem because they know people are going to mess that up. Um, so it's a way to just stop and before you start writing equations out and solving it wrong and picking that wrong answer, just tell yourself, what am I going to expect to get You know, the, the end result of this question to be and cross out things that aren't going to make sense right off the bat. And the other part of it is, is it's not always going to be the easy way. They're not going to always ask you questions in the easiest format. You're not always going to have a dose in two distances that you're going to square in order to get a new dose. Sometimes they will give you two different doses and a distance, and you end up having to take a square root of a number in order to find the new distance. You know, they need to know that you know your math concepts and you know that if you're not squaring a distance that you would take a square root of something to get that distance. So you have to understand basic math concepts and be able to solve the formulas in both directions because they're not just going to hand everything to you in the easiest format. You do have a problem like this on your week two practice problems that you can use for problem solving. Um, so let's do some practice problems. Uh, example one, a single posterior spine field, 300 centigrade to a depth of seven, using an isocentric technique of 100 SAD. The patient was treated incorrectly at 100 CM, SSD to a depth of seven. What did the patient receive in dose? So we know that the dose will get lower because we are going farther from the point of calculation. Sometimes this is hard for people unless you actually draw it out. But if you actually look at the source to the actual reference point of calculation, it's 100. It's not that 7CM is irrelevant. Um, it is for calculations, but your reference depth from the source you know, to your reference point is still 100. Um, whereas the SSD setup is 100 SSD to the skin, and then you have another 7 centimeters of depth into the patient, so it's actually 107 centimeters. So we know we have 100 originally, and now we're going to 107, so that 
calc depth in the patient is farther away now. So here's the, the problem again, if you want to review it again before getting ready to set up your formula. You want to ask yourself, should that answer be a higher dose or a lower dose? The patient was accidentally treated farther from the original setup. So is this an underdose or an overdose? Well, the patient dose is going to go down. So we know that on the exam, we're going to cross out all higher answers. We are not expecting that patient to get a higher dose. If they were treated at a farther distance one day, they actually got underdosed. So instantly, you're going to cross out all the higher answers in case you set up that formula wrong. You know you don't want to pick one of those answers. So go ahead and set up your formula now. You should be setting up 100 over 107 squared, and then you're going to multiply that by 300 centigrade. You should get 262 centigrade for your answer. If you accidentally flipped your numbers, you're going to know right off the bat that you did that. If you put 107 over 100, you're going to get higher than 300, and you're already going to know that you messed up because you already crossed out those higher numbers as your choices. So you'll look at it and say, oh, I must have flipped my numbers around. So reset up your problem. Once you get that lower number, you're going to look down. You're going to see 262 is one of your choices, and you're going to know that you did it correctly. So by crossing those out initially, you're going to know when you've maybe messed up one of your formulas. Um, actually, the other example, instead of putting it in here, I just have decided that since you have it in your practice problems, for you to refer to that practice problem, it's going to be a problem using the square root instead of distance. I'll let you try to figure out if you can, can see which one it is. And then I want you to give it an honest effort on your own first, but if you get stuck, use the student cafe to help each other out and try to solve this problem.